The next session is a keynote address where Gela will be joined by Emilio Alonso Mendoza, an attorney who has received his Jewish doctor from the University of Miami School of Law. And he has also received his Bachelor's of Arts in Journalism from the University of Miami. Having been the CEO of AG Bell for, oh, since 2014, he has guided the organization towards international growth and innovation. Emilio's work extends beyond, as he has been the president and CEO of various organizations that work towards changing lives, dedicating his time and energy to be a force for good. I welcome you both to give the keynote address. Thank you Thank so you. much. And I will pull up the slides for Emilio. Before I begin, I want to say how proud we are to be part of uh, this meeting. In 2019, uh, Gail and I, in that December, visited India. Uh, and uh, I have many mementos from that trip. But one that I have is this one that I keep on my desk uh, all the time. It was given to me by uh, some uh, wonderful uh, people in, in, in India. And um, we were uh, so impressed and so committed that we were planning to go back the next year. But of course, you know what happened with COVID and all that. So here we are almost three years later, um, here again with all of you and uh, extremely uh, proud and excited. Um, it, it's, um, we woke up very early to do this, but you know, hearing the other uh, speakers and, and seeing this wonderful vision, uh, we're awake already, and I only had one cup of coffee, but I miss the Indian tea very much, by the way. Uh, as you can see here, can we see more of the, can we, can you slide the, this is our, our building, which is about 15 uh, blocks away from where I live in, in Georgetown in Washington, D.C. Uh, it was built by Dr. Bell uh, in 1893. Uh, uh, the organization began in 1890, and I don't know if you know this, I think many of you do, but uh, Alexander Graham Bell, first, uh, first and foremost, is a teacher of the deaf. As a matter of fact, in his gravestone in Nova Scotia, uh, it's just a simple inscription that says Alexander Graham Bell, uh, inventor, teacher of the deaf. He saw himself, his life uh, work was uh, to uh, help and, and, and instruct deaf people. His mother was deaf, his wife was deaf. And um, the, he, you know, his is an, an incredible story. As I said, he founded the organization in, in uh, 1890 and uh, built that building when, uh, with a prize that he won called the Volta Award, ergo the name, the Volta Bureau. And obviously, uh, it's, it's a wonderful place to, to work in, uh, even though, as you can see, now we're working from home. But it's so close that I go in there every once in a while when the building's alone and, uh, and, and, and enjoy it. Uh, here at, at, at AG Bell, we are uh, working globally to ensure that people who are deaf and hard of hearing can hear and speak. Uh, we're here to provide uh, support information, resources, and more to uh, help all of you on your journey. We want all families to be informed and supported. We want professionals to be appropriately qualified to teach and help children with hearing loss. We want uh, public policy leaders to effectively address the needs of people with hearing loss. And we want communities to be empowered to help their neighbors with hearing loss succeed. That has expanded from what we used to do here in the United States to now a, a whole international approach. You have offices in Spain. Uh, Gaila, what she's doing today is uh, something that we do a lot. And this is one, you know, I heard someone say, uh, 
uh, about the advantages of um, the silver lining, so to speak, of the pandemic. And to us, it's this, it's the fact that, you know, when we went in 2019, it was wonderful, but we flew 18 hours <laughs> before we got to you. And this morning, I, you know, I just got up and got dressed and, and here I am. And so we're taking advantage of that opportunity to reach uh, uh, the world, but more importantly, to start this dialogue about empowering and trying to help. You know, we don't have all the money in the world, but we have a lot of knowledge within the people in, in our organization. And most of all, we have a lot of, of desire and goodwill. And I think uh, having that, that desire, and I think that having, you know, for lack of a better word, uh, a heart and a passion uh, to uh, help children, people, actually, everyone who is deaf around the world, I think that is an impetus that that um, that it can be transformational uh, all over the world. Um, we, uh, as you were, is there an next slide, Gayla, for, or no? Uh, anyway, we, um, as, as we all know, it's early hearing screening is very important and uh, uh, early detection is important, but more importantly is uh, the therapy that follows cochlear implantation. And we find that very sad that in some places uh, the child gets a cochlear implant and then it, the, they don't have the, the appropriate therapies to following that is the key to everything and after that the child just because the child can listen and talk doesn't mean that they don't need um, other other guidance and they need to to assimilate into um into society as a whole and we help with that as well we have as you can i invite you all to go to our website because in there you will find uh, what we, there's a video called Cradle to Career. And in a way, uh, it, it explains very concisely uh, our mission and where we want to go. The things that we're proud of, uh, we're proud of many things. One of the things that we're proudest of is our certified professionals, certified uh, LISO uh, specialists. Right now we have approximately 1,019 worldwide 742 are in the United States uh, and 277 are in other countries. We're going to have quite an influx of certified uh, Spanish speaking professionals very soon because we have uh, just uh, launched, actually this, um, by the time the end of April comes, we're hoping to have 40 plus uh, Spanish-speaking professionals uh, certified. We translated our, our exam into Spanish and the literature that, that accompany, accompanies it as well. And uh, our office in Spain is very much the outreach point to all Hispanic-speaking countries. And of course, the others would follow Arabic, Portuguese, etc. Uh, I'm not saying when, so but the, it, it will follow because as soon as we did the Spanish one, of course, everybody uh, called us, they wanted in their language, but it's a very comprehensive exam. It's, uh, it's actually the gold standard to, to measure the capacity of uh, uh, the professionals because it's not only the exam, it's also uh, mentoring and it's also hours of work, et cetera. So um, to begin that, process, I would like to invite you to go to the symposium. We have a symposium every year. And the beautiful thing about the symposium now is that not only before, not only did you need the money for registration, but of course, all the costs of travel, et cetera. And now from the comfort of your home on June 29th and 30th, um, you can see, uh, you can participate and you can see uh, our, our symposium online. Uh, afterwards, afterwards, uh, we, it will be on demand from July 20th to August 31st. 
So uh, you can see it all in the two days or you can see parts or if you like something, you can go back or if you miss something, you can go back. The, before on the live symposium, you had to choose tracks, but the way that we're doing it here, uh, you can see the whole, sorry, you can see the whole symposium, every, every single presentation uh, during the live and then Afterwards, uh, on demand, you can see the rest. As you can see on the slide here, we there. That's where you go, www.agvelsymposium.com, and to register, uh, you go to uh, agvelsymposium.com. Register too. I have a piece of news because we want um, to have to give us students the the opportunity to participate and we know everybody has limited resources but i think it's a it's a worldwide <clears throat> malady so to speak that students always uh have to uh, have to struggle because they have expenses they have books they have uh <clears throat> living expenses etc cetera, etc cetera. and so uh we want to make available a limited amount of scholarships to, to students that are participating in, in this conference. Um, so uh, contact us at, at AG Bell and uh, send us your, uh, your, your request and we will try to see what we can do uh, in order to um, assure your attendance. Um, again, I want to thank uh, all of you uh, profusely. This is a wonderful, wonderful conference. Uh, we enjoy a very good uh, relationship with a lot of you, and we want that to continue. As I say, we have our memories of India are um, in our heart and, and in our mind. So uh, I wish you all the best. Please know that we're here to help in any way we can. Uh, and uh, we're trying to raise the funds around the world to to help even more. But until the moment, until the money comes, we can give you all the knowledge that our professionals and, and our staff uh, has, and, and we will do that gladly. So I think I better stop talking, Gayla, because it's your turn now, right? Thank you, Emilio. Yes, and I, I wanna apologize that I am showing the the view that I am with the slides, but I could not um, advance Emilio's slides because everything was stuck. That sometimes happens on Zoom, and that's so that's what's what happened. So I will I will try to be short um, <clears throat> and um, manually move my slides. So as an organization that has been around since 1890, I mean Alexander Graham Bell, Dr. Bell the um, prolific inventor who also invented the telephone started this organization and his spirit has been around since then. The family is still involved. Um, the mission remains the same, but this is not the same world. We are, are happy as Emilio indicated, our world is, is smaller and we, we learned um, you know, through this COVID pandemic that um, we can adjust and we all have done that. Um, people are online together. Um, we have continued um, to do um, detection of hearing loss and services. And I think um, certainly we want to give a round of applause to, to those of you who've, who've done that. Um, it's not been easy. Have all services been able to stay in place? Not all. Have some services happened late? Are fewer children being screened? Yes. But do we continue to rally on? Um, because we know we, we must, we do. And I wanna applaud you for being part of that. So in terms of AG Bell, we continue to be the torch bearer. We hold up the torch that says, children with hearing loss can hear and talk. This is still news in today's world. <laughs> Um, sign language is something that people can see and it has its own beauty, but um, hearing loss is something that is quiet and silent. And so, it, you know, we often don't know that a child or an adult has a hearing loss, but in fact, 
Um, children who are deaf or hard of hearing have been speaking for years and years and years, going back to Alexander Graham Bell. Where we've seen such strides is that we can hear so much better and we identify people so much earlier. So we continue to hold that torch up and feel that there's more promise today than ever in that nearly every child um, who is born deaf or hard of hearing can have the opportunity to learn to listen and talk. What needs to be addressed for success? We've spoken about some of those things today, um, but all of these things, which really involve a um, parent and the professionals they partner with, um, our aspects. I'm going to just cover a few of these um, briefly during this keynote, because I think these in particular are important to this audience. Parent involvement, so, so key. There was a study done in Australia and um, for many years now, led by Teresa, Dr. Teresa Ching, um, the National Acoustics Lab has been doing a huge study on 450 plus children, and they followed them from um, the time that they were born and until now, I think they're at about 10 years of age. But they've been able, as they follow those children, to be able to also follow their parents. And here are some things they found um, that parents take a central role. Um, in five areas for their child who is deaf or hard of hearing. They work behind the scenes. They act as the case manager for their child. So the one who has a, a folder or keeps this information you know, on their phone. Um, but essentially that parents are the person who goes between the professionals and also manages the child's um, daily life, um, their language learning, their amplification, um, giving them the right opportunities, such as um, social exposure for language development, educational placements, but the parent acts as, acts as a case manager. The parents, no matter what they're doing, whether they are advocating for their child, whether they're doing some of that case management, they always have their child's language development in mind. I want my child to move from here to here and let me just reiterate again how VConnect, I know, plays such an important role um, um, in, in this way because there are so, we parents have needs as well. I myself am a parent of a child who does not have a hearing loss, but who has an intellectual uh, difference. And I know that I have my professional hat, but I also have my parent hat. And I know how... Um, regardless of what my needs were as a parent, I continually had to, to pay attention to that most important goal. And that was to get my child as far as I possibly could so that she would be ready for school, for example. We know that parents act as that number one advocate for their child with hearing loss. We know that parents do serve a number of roles, but at the end of the day, they are parents. We know that can be sometimes very tiring and very discouraging because you feel that someone, maybe a professional um, perhaps, should step into the gap and help. Remember to ask for help. Sometimes we forget to do that. But to also know that um, sometimes the reason you are the helper as a parent is because you, in fact, do know your child best and that sometimes you really are the best person to do that. But never forget your community. And in this conference, one important member of the community is certainly VConnect. Another important member of your community is, is AG Bell. We have free parents and family. We have free memberships for um, families and friends. And so you could join AG Bell by going to our homepage at agbell.org and you can join for free and then also be exposed to even a larger community of parents and others who want to make listening and spoken language happen for your child. We also have a parent support line and this is the number, but again, you can always um, at agbell.org, we have a contact us. You can always send a message there and we will get you in touch with our parent um, consultant. We have a parent who 
um, knows how to connect families and can respond to questions regardless of where you are from in the world. Another important point I'd like to make, hearing technology. We know that hearing loss has an effect on speech and language development. Um, and we know that really more than anything, the, the big issue with hearing loss is it creates a, um, an, a, an accessibility problem. So we have this child who has a, a brain that is ready to listen, but because there is something going on with the ear, it's as if the pathway or the door to that brain has been interrupted. That's what hearing aids and cochlear implants can provide. They can be that door to the brain. We know that audibility, being able to hear the spoken word is incredibly important for learning, listening, and spoken language. So early identification of hearing loss, fitting of hearing aids by an audiologist, management of those hearing aids over time by the audiologist, daily checking of the hearing aids and even more than once a day by the parents and making sure your child wears their amplification at least 10 hours a day, at least. More is great, but at least 10 hours of their awake time each day is incredibly important. The research has shown us that. And so I don't want to read to you, but I, I, I'm going to read to you just from this slide because I think this is an important message. By maximizing access to a child's fluent language models. How do children with typical hearing learn to hear, learn language? They overhear their family. They interact with their family. And so it's the same for children who are deaf or hard of hearing. So by maximizing access to a child's fluent language models, which would preferably be parents and other family members, through maximizing auditory access through early, well-fitted amplification or hearing aids, combined with the family's love, their care, their attention, and exposure to the family. Using the language you use fluently through conversational turn-taking and reading-related activities every day, and with the support and guidance of well-trained, qualified professionals, spoken language is learned. Now, this is a way to simplify it, but in a sense, it really is that simple. You have to have a plan and you have to work that plan. Every day, your child has to have the amplification on. And if you're having issues with that, talk to a professional about how to improve upon it because over time, it can happen. And when I say over time, I don't mean 10 months later. I mean, within weeks, your child goes from maybe very little wear time with their amplification to full-time wear time while they're awake. Let them rest while they're sleeping without their amplification, but while they're awake, they need to have their amplification on. Every day, talk to your child. Um, talk to the child as if they're going to respond to you. And every day, read to your child. Even if your child doesn't seem interested, it's still important for them to hear you read and to have that input of language. And then this is what you're going to gain, listening and spoken language. I've already indicated that message of early intervention and how important it is, but early intervention should be family-centered. And that means that when you leave an early intervention session as a parent, you need to know what you need to do. And if you find you don't know what to do, don't leave. <laughs> Ask the question. Just say, I didn't understand, I need additional help. It is not you. Um, we as professionals sometimes use language that is not always clear, but every day and every week is important in your child's life and you need to know what you need to do at home because the early intervention happens at a very specific time, but the learning to listen and talk happens the rest of the time. So you as the parent need to know what to do. And it's okay to say, I didn't understand that. Maybe you need to write that down. Could you explain that to me again or show that to me again so that each week you have things to work on so your child is moving ahead. Consistent auditory experience should lead to success in learning to listen and using spoken language. 
So often parents get discouraged with um, in the early months because they don't see an obvious change in their child's skills. Keep talking to your professionals about that, but a child does need some time to kind of cook um, with their amplification. At the same time, if, if a cochlear implant is recommended, take that recommendation very seriously because the professionals recommended that because they feel your child is either not hearing well enough or is not going to be hearing well enough over time to readily develop listening and spoken language. We have a bibliography for those parents and those professionals who would like to see um, some of our um, literature um, in the field around listening and spoken language. These are some of our resources. Again, you can become a, a free family or friends member. We'd like to have you um, on board with us. And again, you may WhatsApp me at any time. And we never forget who this is about. It's about babies and about the children. And that's why we do the work that we do. Thank you.